All right. Well, we're going to solve today. So we're going to solve trig functions. Well, trig equations, right? Um, today, you might want to get out your unit circle. If you don't feel like you know it by heart, you're going to want to get it out. Okay, so we're just going to do a ton of examples um, this morning. Okay, so we're going to solve... Um, 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0 over the domain of 0 to 2 pi. Now, let's just take a look at this domain real quickly. Looking at this, this is how your answers have to be given, okay? So it could equal 0, but not 2 pi, and it could be anything on the in-between. So we don't want to give a negative angle, and we don't want to give over a full rotation, okay? If we get an answer of 2 pi, we want to write it as 0 and not 2 pi. Now, the book is not going to do this. The book will not limit the domain. They'll give a general answer that will work for um, negative infinity to infinity. But that's not what I'm going to ask you to do on a quiz or on a test, okay? So your answers are going to look different in the book than they do in our notes, all right? We'll kind of talk about that in a little bit. So looking at this, we're trying to solve um, for the cosine of x. So we're really trying to find those values of x. We're really trying to isolate that, right? So how do we do that? This is a very simple one. It's exactly what you think it should be. What are we going to do first? Add the 1. Okay, and then? Divide by 2. Okay, so now we ask ourselves, where is cosine 1 half? So where is the x value 1 half? I'm ready. Yes, and? 5 pi over 3. Get the unit circle out if you don't know it. Okay, so now this is how we would give our answer. Okay, this is over a restricted domain. The book is going to give you a general solution. Okay, so that has no domain restriction. Their answer will look like this. X equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi times n. And 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi times n. Now think about what that's saying. Isn't x um, equal to pi over 3 plus 2 pi over n? Think about n. If I plug in 1, doesn't that just add a full revolution? So you get 7 pi over 3. And another one would give you 13 pi over 3, right? All it's saying is that this is going to continue. It's the, that idea of those coterminal angles, right? It just keeps repeating, same location, different representation. This is without a restriction. Okay, so this is how the book is going to give their answer. But I do not want an answer like that. I want an answer like this. Do you see the difference? Okay, so um, let's move on. All right, three, um, we're solving again. All of these are going to be solving, so I'm just going to stop writing that, okay? Uh, three tangent squared of x equals one. And all of these are going to be under that same domain restriction, okay? Um, so, what do you think you do first here? Not yet. You got to isolate tangent first. Divide so, divide by 3 first. Okay. Uh, which gives you 1 third, not 3. And then what do we do? How do you get rid of the squared? Take the square root. When you take the square root, what do you get? Plus or minus. So, now I'm going to have tangent of x equals plus or minus. Um, root one third. Now let's think about that for a second. It's yes, you do. So this is like the square root of one over the square root of three, correct? So this is really one over root three, but then you have to rationalize it. So you have to multiply by root three. So I get root three over three. See what just happened there? So now the tangent of x equals plus or minus root 3 over 3. So now we have to ask ourselves, where on the unit circle does that occur? Now think about the fact that you have plus or minus here. So where does a positive root 3 over 3 occur, and where does a negative root 3 over 3 occur? Now you've got to think about the combination. Okay, Is it going to be the 1 half root 3 over 2 combination? Or is it going to be root 3 over 2 comma 1 half combination? Think about the fact that tangents y over x. Should 
shouldn't it be root 3 over 2 comma 1 half? Yeah. Okay, because that's where you're going to get that rationalizing happening. And so where does that occur? Pi over 6. Pi over 6. Where else? 5 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6, right, because now we're going into the negatives. Um, and then 11 pi over 6, because we can have a positive or a negative combination there. Now, for me, this is how you would give your answer. Okay? The book is going to give this answer different. Do you remember that the period for cosine, sine, secant, and cosecant is 2 pi? Okay, can we go back up here to example 1 for a minute, actually? Let's write that down. So the period for cosine, secant, sine, and cosecant is 2 pi. Okay, that's why you add that 2 pi n. All right, so that's where that's coming from. What's the t um, period for tangent and cotangent? Pi. Okay, so now their general answer is going to look different. They're not going to add 2 pi anymore because their um, period's pi. So you would give your answer like x equals pi over 6 plus pi times n. Now if you think about that, as soon as I plug in n equals 1, don't I get to 7 pi over 6? Right? So I don't need to list that one. But the other one I have to list is 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6 plus pi times n. When you added one revolution to that, you would account for that 11 pi over 6. So the book's answer is going to look like this. Do you see how different this looks than what we're going to give? Okay, you're not going to have to do this. You have to do this. It's just going to be more difficult to kind of check your solutions. Okay, um, so let's make a note here. This is um, a general solution. And the period for tangent and cotangent is pi. So that's where that pi times n is coming from, okay? Kelly, did you have a question? Yeah, yours are the ones that are boxed. That's what I want, because we have an actual domain restriction from 0 to pi. So we're not like, worrying about like, the restrictions of like, tangent and cotangent? Right, not yet, okay? okay? All the, all, we're going to build everything together by the end of the chapter, okay? Can we move on? Can we move on to the next example? Everybody okay so far? Okay, um, cotangent x cosine squared x equals 4 cotangent x. Okay, getting more complicated now. Okay, so let's think. Just general rules of solving an equation. If these were not trig functions and they were just like x values, what would you have to do? Move it all to one side. You have to get everything to one side, set it equal to zero, and then we're going to try to factor. Okay, so when I do that, I end up with cotangent of x times cosine squared of x minus 4 cotangent x equals zero. Okay, well... Do you see the common factor of cotangent of x? Okay, so we're going to factor that out. So now I have cotangent of x times cosine squared of x minus 4 equals um, 0. Okay, so what can I use now? The 0 product property. There it is. Okay, so we're going to use a 0 product property. Is that each one of these pieces equal to 0? All right, well, this one's ready to go. Where is cotangent zero? So remember, cotangent is x over y. So where is it zero? Uh, two, Thank you. Pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. You guys are getting me a little bit nervous about this whole unit circle thing. There's not a lot of response coming. So um, if you don't remember your unit circle, maybe we want to review that tonight. Add that to your list of things to do, okay? Um, now this piece... Okay, this is going to give us cosine squared of x equals 2, or 4. 
Yeah, I jumped ahead there. Four, okay, then what do you have to do? Take the square root. So we're going to end up getting cosine of x equals plus or minus 2. Where does that happen? It doesn't. How come? Right, it only goes to 1 and negative 1, right? So the range for cosine is from negative 1 to 1. This is out of the range. If you were to put this in your calculator, okay, so if you did the inverse of cosine of 2, you're going to get an error because of, of the restriction, okay? So this piece is a no solution. And just, you know, maybe make yourself a note. Range is from negative 1 to 1. Okay, so the only solutions we get are x um, equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. I don't know if you've noticed so far with our solutions, but they go in um, numerical order, right? From least to greatest, you know I'm going to expect you to do that on the quiz. Okay, moving on. We doing okay so far. It's not bad yet, right? Keyword. Okay, um, 2 sine squared of x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. Um, there's an issue here. We can't do anything yet. How come? There's different trig functions going on here, right? So you see this sine squared? That's an issue. <coughs> but based on what I saw yesterday, you know what sine squared is equal to. What is it equal to? One minus, One minus cosine squared, right? So can't we substitute? Notice we're having a merge now, okay? We're merging 5152 into 53 now. Okay, so we are going to do 2 times 1 minus cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, thoughts on what to do next? Definitely distribute, so 2 minus 2 cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. Um, we should combine like terms, right? Now, you guys know my feelings on having a negative term for that um, square term. Everyone see that we're going to have to factor this? Okay, so I'm going to move everything to the other side or multiply through by a negative because I hate that negative square term. It really bothers me, okay? So I'm just going to move it all over. So I get 2 cosine squared of x minus 3 cosine x. This was a minus 1. It's going to become a plus 1. Okay, so I hate that negative term. I'm just going to make it positive either by multiplying by that negative one or thinking about adding everything to the other side. Okay, so you ready to factor? Now, again, what am I thinking? So here, I'm thinking like this looks like 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. If those trig functions are confusing to you, replace them with x. Factor it and then substitute back in. Okay, if that's difficult for you to do. Everybody agree it factors to 2x minus 1 times x minus 1? Okay, so now instead of x, I'm just going to put a cosine, right? It's the same thing. So I have 2 cosine x minus 1 times cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Now we can apply the yes, and so this is going to give us the cosine of x equals 1 half and the cosine of x equals 1. And now we just have to use our unit circle. Okay, so where is cosine a half? Pi over 3 and um, 5 pi over 3. Where is cosine 1? Where is the x value 1? 0 or 2 pi. So which one do I write? Zero, because remember, my restriction is always going to be zero with that bracket and two pi with the parenthesis. So if you get a solution of zero or two pi, you have to choose to write zero. Okay, so this is zero. And now I want to merge these answers together going from least to greatest. So zero pi over three and five pi over three. Pretty fun. Really enjoyable? <clears throat> We're going to do this one next. Okay, you will need your calculator on this one. So go ahead and if you have a calculator, get it out. 
Um, if not, we can just kind of watch. I'll grab mine. I would like you to try to um, start this one. Okay, so see what you can do with that. Did you start by factoring? Okay, so this factors to 3 tangent of x. Um, is it 2 and 2? So minus 2. And tangent of x plus 2. Okay, so then when you solved using the zero product property, you got tangent of x equals 2 thirds and tangent of x equals negative 2. Correct? Okay, now here's a deal. Neither one of these solutions is on the unit circle, right? Um, so we have to use a calculator to do this. So do you remember how to find an angle using your calculator? The inverse. So we're going to do, first of all, we have to be in radian mode. Notice that all of our answers have been in radians. So we always give our answers in radians. So go to the mode, make sure you're on radian. Okay, take a bit clear off. All right, now um, we're going to do second tangent of two thirds. Right, that's telling your calculator you're looking for that angle. So in the calculator, you're typing in tangent to the negative one of two thirds, and we should be getting 0.588. Now, we know that these are all symmetrical answers, right? Because the idea of the unit circle is all that symmetry happening there. So, we know there's a second solution. Do you remember how to find it? There were rules we used. What were they? I'm ready. You go ahead and just say it when you're ready. Um, it is not. There was a rule we had to apply. Tangent of theta was equal to tangent of plus, no, okay. So pi plus theta is the correct rule. Now let's think about that. Think about your unit circle. Look at your unit circle. Look at the first quadrant. Tangent's positive, right? Where else is tangent positive? Quadrant three, right? Don't you have to add 180 degrees or pi to get there? That's where that rule comes from, okay? So now in order to find the second one, we have to add pi to this. So plus um, pi is going to take us to um, 3.730. Uh, okay, so in this case, x equals these two solutions. All right, you have to know this rule in order to, to find the second angle. All right, now let's do the second set. Okay, so now we're going to find the angle for negative 2. So second tangent, negative 2. Okay, in this case, we get negative 1.107. What's the issue with that solution? It's negative. So how do I make it positive? Add 2 pi to it, add that full revolution. Okay, so plus 2 pi. It's going to take me to 5.176. 5.176 is between 0 and 2 pi, so that's a good solution. How do I get the second solution? I can add pi. Now, if I add pi to this answer, I'm over the full revolution, so that's not going to work. I need to add pi to this solution. Okay, so to get the second one, we're going to do negative 1.107 plus pi.
there we go. So 2.035, okay? So in this case, x equals those solutions. And we just merge all that together into one. Okay, now, I don't know if you remember when we were going over the assignment sheet, um, but we talked about the fact that every single um, quiz and test in this unit is without a calculator. So will you be expected to do this on a quiz or a test? No, but you will have to do it on um, your homework. Okay, so that's why you need that. Okay, so you definitely need to remember those rules. You want to know the ones for sine and cosine? Okay, so sine of theta is equal to the sine of 180 or pi minus theta. And cosine of theta is equal to the cosine of 2 pi um, minus theta. All right, so those were rules that um, we needed for chapter 4. Um, that maybe you forgot. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next type of equation. Okay, now this one is a little bit harder. So, so far I think you've been okay. It's not been too bad. Okay, this, this next part gets a little bit confusing. Okay, moving on. All right. Um, well, I have no idea what that is. All right, so example six. Um... We have cosine of x over 2 equals 1 half. Okay, so how is this different? It's not just x anymore, is it? It's x over 2. So this is an issue, okay? We can't go right into solving from the very beginning. We have to change this. So we're going to make some steps over here. This is what you do when you see something that is not just x, okay? Step one, you let, in this case, x over 2 equal y. So you change this into a y, okay? Because then you're able to solve it, okay? So let's do that. So I have the cosine of y equals 1 half. Okay, now I can solve, right? So what is y in this situation? So where's cosine 1 half? Pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. But those are not my solutions. Those are the solutions for y, okay? So the second step was to solve for y. Now we're on step three. So once I get these solutions, I now have to think about what x is equal to. So you take your solutions for y and set them equal to x over 2. Okay, so now I take these solutions and I set them equal to x over 2. And then I solve, okay? Then solve for x. Okay, now, how do you solve for x? Just, cross Just yeah, cross multiply, multiply by two, right? Multiply by two on each side, so x equals two pi over three, and x equals 10 pi over three. How about this 10 pi over 3? What is the issue here? It's outside of the restriction. If I, uh, I can't subtract 2 pi, um, what happens here is because this is x over 2, it's really like 1 half x, right? That means the same thing. Agree with that? Okay, what this is telling you to do is cut your solutions in half. Okay, so this is like a little trick to remember. 
This means cut your solutions in half. So notice, we had two solutions when we solve for y. How many real solutions do we have now for x? <coughs> Only one. So we went from two to one solutions. We cut our solutions in half. That's what that one half is telling you to do. So those half is only half the answer, only one of your answers work. Right, in that case. Now sometimes you're gonna get more answers. Like you're gonna see, we're gonna start getting more and more answers. I mean sometimes you can get like sixteen answers. Okay? Yes. What if it was like pi over three? Would you only have a third of the solutions? Exactly. So if it was x over 3, you'd have a third of the solutions. If it was x over 4, you'd have a fourth of the solutions. Now, <laughs> if I had to take a third of these solutions, it's just going to give me one solution. If I had to take a fourth of them, it's only going to give me one solution, okay? But if I had four solutions, you know, and I'm cutting them in half, I should get two solutions. So you've got to kind of keep that in mind. Yes? Because remember that my domain restriction has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, and this is over 2 pi. All right. I'm going to try another one. Okay, so now let's try cosine of 2x <coughs> equals 1 half. Okay, so what's the issue? We don't just have x, right? So we have to change this to a y. We're substituting in, so we're following the same rule. So now I have cosine of y equals 1 half. And I hope at this point in the lesson you know where cosine is a half because I've asked you about five times now. So where is that happening? Pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. Okay, now this 2, okay, is now telling you something different. Okay, so that 2 is now telling you to double your solutions. So what it means is I'm going to go from getting two solutions for y, and if I have to double them, I'm going to have four answers now. I'm going to get four solutions. I'm going to show you what we're going to do to get there. Yeah? So um, how do you know when you need to substitute for y? Anytime x is not alone. If you look at all of the situations previous to this, x has been alone every single time. Okay? So when that happens, you can just use the unit circle or your calculator to get your solutions. When it, x is not alone, you have to use the substitution of y and go through this process. Okay, so now at this point, we have um, substituted for y, we've solved for y, we now need to set this back equal to 2x. So each one of these solutions gets set to 2x. And then we solve. Okay, so everybody agree we have to multiply by a half in order to get there? Okay, so I have x equals pi over 6 and x equals um, 5 pi over 6. Notice I only have two solutions still. I need to go from two solutions to four solutions because this two is telling me to double my solutions, okay? So this is how you have to get there. We have to add a step four. For step four, uh, when in need of more solutions, go back to y and add the period until you have desired amount. Okay, now this is where it gets a little confusing. Okay, so the first, there's a lot of thinking that goes in here. First of all, we have to know how many solutions we need. Okay, so we had two originally. I need to double them, so how many solutions do I need? Four. So I have to have four solutions. Okay, so to get those four solutions, I'm going to add the period. So now the next thing I have to think about is what is the period for cosine? So for cosine, sine, secant, cosecant, the period is 2 pi. 
right? So that's what I add. But if this were tangent, I would have to add pi. So you got to remember that part, okay? So now we're going to add 2 pi to our solutions for y, okay? And we're going to add them one to each because if I add 2 pi here and I add 2 pi here, don't I now have four solutions? Right? I have four answers. So I take pi over 3 and I add 2 pi. And I take 5 pi over 3 and I add 2 pi. At this point, I'm going to have y equals uh, 7 pi over 3 and uh, 11 pi over 3. Okay, but that's y. So now what do you have to do with those? Go back and set them equal to x, okay? So now you have to take these and say 2x equals 7 pi over 3 and 2x equals 11 pi over 3. So my additional solutions will be 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Final answer, you combine your x's. So I have pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. All within the restriction, I've gone from two solutions, doubling it takes me to the four solutions, and this is my final answer. Let's say you forgot that you had to have four solutions. Okay, let's say that you forgot that rule. If I was to add another 2 pi, so if I took this 7 pi over 3 and I added another 2 pi, I would be at 13 pi over 3, wouldn't I? When I take the 13 pi over 3, I set it equal to 2x, I would get 13 pi over 6. Well, 13 pi over 6 is over the restriction. So that's another way you can check your solutions to make sure you have them all. Okay, you don't want anything over 2 pi. These are probably the harder problems for students, okay, is getting the more solutions. Cutting the solutions down is easier because you don't have to keep adding those revolutions. This is the more difficult piece, okay? Now, sometimes you're going to get, like, 10 answers, okay? 20 answers. That's okay, all right? It just depends how much, you know, if this were a 3, you'd have to triple the solutions. If it were a 5, you would have to get 5 times the solutions, right? So that right there would give us... Um, 10 solutions. What if this were plus or minus, right? We would have started out with four solutions, and then we would have had to double it to get eight. So these can really get quite a few answers with it. Yes? Yeah, so, well, what would happen there if this were a triple, right, we would have had two solutions, we would need six. So I would go here, I would get two more, I would need two more, so I would go back and add another two pi. To those original it's kind of like branches they work like branches like you do half the solutions here and half the solutions here so would you always go back to the original yes so even with you always go back to the y how many times do you add two pi to the original infinitely many oh so you would just do like pi over three plus two pi plus, plus two, two pi. pi and then five pi over three plus two pi plus two pi okay yeah we're going to really get into this it's going to be great okay <laughs>